Hello, everyone. It's Steve with Aptera Owners Club. Um, as promised, Aptera has released their Aaron 2 video, and it was pretty awesome and a little disappointing, actually. And I'll tell you the disappointing part towards the end of the video. Um, and so here we start at the beginning. Now, I want to pause here. The I know this is just a render, but the glossy finish looks amazing. And this is reflective of the new glass solar panels they have. So remember, we were told that the solar panels are now glass. They're not plastic. So they're not, they were originally like PET, plastic um, encapsulated, but they've switched over to glass and glass is obviously much more scratch resistant and, and much shinier. And you can see this shiny, almost like gem-like pearly appearance to the uh, Aptera in the render. And of course it is a render, but I have seen pictures, uh, which I think Aptera will be releasing fairly soon of the solar panels the new solar panels that are in glass and they do look like this. They, they're very glossy and it looks amazing. And there's a couple of the things in this video that I didn't notice on the previous renders. And I think they were there the whole time and maybe you guys noticed it, but I just didn't notice it. So I will point it out in these videos. Okay, so here's the thing that I noticed R right here. So if you see right here, there's a little separate ridge to this. And over here, see, there's like a little ridge. So this must be something they did to increase aerodynamics of the wheel covers. It's slightly slanted um, from inward to outward. And there's a, basically a little fin right here. And as it rotates around, you'll see the, um, you'll see it more clearly. So like, yeah, look right there and right there. It, it, it goes in from inside to outside and kind of makes like this S shape. I think this, um, conforms to the flow of the air or between the body and the wheel covers. And you'll see it right here. It's very distinct. So this is something that's not, that does not show up on the gamma and uh, must be a new production intent little tweak here. It, it was probably there the whole time and I just noticed it for the first time. All right, so then we're get, we're going through the interior. Uh, the other thing right here is it looks like there's two speakers here. I'm guessing this is a speaker and this is also a speaker. And you'll see the same thing on the other side. Again, the really large uh, cup holders. Now it's going to be interesting to see if it holds the ridiculously large cup holders that my family has. So we'll have to see about that. And of course, this is a little smaller. And then you'll notice that um, so the hazard light button is up here and then You'll notice there's a single piece of glass, and they told us this. There's a single piece of glass um, over the side view mirrors, and, but there's two separate um, display modules. And you can kind of see that there's a clear area here, and you can clearly see the glass right there. Whoever um, doing these renders loves Daft Punk's uh, Game of Love. And you'll see it over here. I suspect this is a speaker, and I'm guessing this is a speaker too. Oh, we forgot to mention the little document thing here, the document holder. Oh, and then this is something that uh, was confirmed before. This is the wiper fluid. So you, you put the wiper fluid in right here, which is fine, I think. And again, the release. Here's the other thing I did not notice in the previous render. If you look at the steering control arm here, They've, they've put on this little thing to increase the aerodynamics of it. It's like a, they molded something over the control arms. So these are normally just round steel control arms. They, they, they're part of the steering mechanism uh, to turn the wheel. But uh, just the perfectly round shape is not very aerodynamic because it has turbulent flow on the back side of the round part. And so they added these fins to kind of smooth out the airflow. So that's a nice touch here. All right, so then we're swinging around the back. Again, love the glossy appearance. And uh, here's a shot of the bunk. And look, a little Easter egg. This is the Aptera tent. Now, we have not seen any renders of the tent. Um, and I made a video a long time ago, two years ago, about the tent and how I thought the, the tent that they, the prototype tent they had was very impractical. 
it was more of a sunshade than an actual usable tent. Um, so hopefully they've uh, talked to some actual tent makers and uh, made it so that it's actually waterproof and useful. And I think it will be. And it fits very nicely in the bunk here. The other thing you can see is the accessory port. The, we know now that this is the light. Here's the subwoofer. And you see the uh, little ring, the cargo retention hooks, little rings. They, they are flush, but it looks like they probably flip up and you can like hook things onto it. So I think like for the pet thing and there's like a cargo net, you can separate the, um, like so your groceries don't move around and stuff. The interior looks super nice as you come in here. I think the material choices look very nice. Um, there's a little seam down the middle here. And then looking at this, this is the other thing. I'm, I'm wondering how this is going to be handled. So this is obviously a um, like um, a charging mat here. There's probably going to be like a charging mat for your phone. But what happens is, is as you drive, especially if you drive, um, I like to take my corners relatively fast. And so the um, the phone will move side to side in here. And I don't know how you can retain it um, from moving side to side and moving off its charger. Maybe you just have to replace it after every turn. But uh, I haven't seen any car manufacturer deal with that problem. Because obviously if you make the thing the exact right size, then it won't move around. But everyone's phones are different sizes. So you can't make one size fits all. It has to be slightly bigger than the biggest phone you expect people to put in there. And then if you have that, there's always going to be some play laterally and it's going to move side to side. Okay, so document holder. Looks like it's, zip it looks like, it's like a zippered neoprene looking thing. And then we're going to go back to this part. Now, this is the part that we were told, like when, when they had the first air in video with the cool swivel of the front uh, wheel covers, that was a very uh, cool idea and everyone loved it. And it gives you access to the entire wheel. And of course, the question that everyone asked was, well, how about the rear wheel? How are we going to access the rear wheel? And this air in two video was supposed to tell us how the um, rear wheel is accessed. And as, you, as you'll see here, it's accessed through a little port like this. Now, obviously you cannot access the wheel this way. It's, a, it's access to the, um, um, the, the, uh, the, the nozzle to put air into the rear wheel. And now it looks like there's almost enough space here that you could just put it in underneath here. So I don't really know if this helps you that much. I was kind of hoping that there would be a way to take this entire panel off very easily and expose the whole mechanism. Um, and obviously that's going to have to happen to replace the wheel if you're going to replace the, t uh, the tires or something like that. But um, this video is not showing that. Maybe that's going to come up in an Air In 3 video of how it comes off. But uh, and this is obviously a very easy, quick way of accessing um, the air nozzle. The, why am I blanking on the name of that? Um, the valve, yeah, the Schrader valve to, um, to put in air into the thing. So if you need to check your tire pressures or put in air, that's a, that's a very quick, easy thing to do. You know, just flip it out. Looks like it's just held in by a little hook. Um, and this looks like it's a plastic piece. But somehow we're going to have to take this entire mech assembly off in order to access the wheel. And I don't know if it's going to be screws or what to replace this entire thing. But um, I suspect that you're going to have to take this at least one side of it off completely access the jacking point. The jacking point is probably somewhere on the, on the swing arm of the rear suspension, and then it'll expose this whole wheel so that you can work on it, change the wheel, change the tires, um, fix flats, whatever. But yeah, I was hoping that it would, they would show some mechanism for taking this off. And so this little round cover, it's cool, but a little disappointing from what I was expecting. Um, but maybe that comes in another video uh, that is forthcoming because you know, Jason did tell us that there is at least a third uh, air in video. Uh, maybe not talking about the air in, but there's a third video talk um, showing some features of the Aptera that we are not aware of. Again, there's this little gap. 
And we discussed this before. This is part of the design. This is not this is not a flaw in the design. This is meant to be there and it's it's in there for a good reason. Overall looks great. Can't wait to take this thing camping. I um I'm not I, depending on the price of this Aptera tent, you know, it may or may not be a good buy. Uh, I think I'm perfectly happy to camp in the thing with the hatch closed. I think that that's perfectly fine. Uh, and that, that'll work fine for me. If the tent is like really cool and a good price, then I, I would buy it. Also, I think third party tent makers can make a pretty, um, pretty good tent for much cheaper. I think this was a was $600 option. It's fairly expensive for a tent. Um, unless it's really, really cool. Um, but can't wait to take this thing camping. I remember that uh, when I checked out the Alpha vehicle, I can lay down no problem. I'm about 5'11", and so there's plenty of space for probably someone up to you know three or four inches taller than me to lay down back here if you push the, um, the, the seats forward. And so there's lots of room to go camping and can't wait to take this thing camping. It'll be super fun. Okay, and there were a few differences between the two Airin videos, and I'm I'm guessing that the Airin two has corrected some of the uh, some of the little rendering problems in the first one, and um, my guess is the second one is the one that is the important one. But here are the few differences that we noticed. Again, there's the Airin two video does not have the little box, which Jason explained to us was a artifact of a old render um an old model so see the here's the air in one video and you see that little box right here and the air in two no box all right the other thing that i noticed is that uh this little accent here is a different color now so let's see let's go back okay right about here here's the first Aaron video. If you look at this, this area right here is um, like a chrome or rose gold color scheme. If you look at the new one, the Aaron 2 video, you'll see right here. It's just black. There is no um, there is no chrome color. Also, the screen looks a little different. If you look at this screen, there's clear vents visible around here with like a little louver around it. So it's like two levels. If you look at the original Aaron video, it's a little harder to tell, but there is no vent. Here, let's get let's see if we get a better shot of this thing. Okay, right here. See, there is no there's no venting system around here. Okay, let's go in here. You can clearly see that there is, there's air vents built into this thing. It doesn't look like, maybe they're adjustable, maybe they're not, I'm not sure. Um, so I take it to mean that this is what we're gonna see in the production model, not this. So hopefully Jason will be able to clear that up for us at some point, which of these two we're looking at. Then if you look at the UI, the UI is also slightly different. You can see this is a little clearer. The interior, you can see the interior a little more clearer in Aaron 2. It's a little more faded in Aaron 1. Of course, this screen is supposed to change uh, depending on what you're doing. And this one, you just see a picture of it. Uh, this one, there's some uh, notifications, washer fluid low. The rest of it looks pretty pretty normal pretty much the same yeah I don't see any other differences and then in in the Aaron one there's nothing on the phone screen in Aaron two it looks like the phone screen is somehow integrated with the UI I don't know if they did that for stylistic reasons or if that's really the way it is but that's a, another difference that you see and then if you look at this, as you scroll in, you can very clearly see that there is a knob here for adjusting the tilt and 
uh, Chris Buchanan has confirmed that there is a telescoping feature. So it both telescopes and tilts. So, okay. Those are the differences I noticed. Oh, actually, if you go a little further here, look right here. Um, these are probably the screws that hold in the rear view mirror, I think. And you can see CPC's um, a little emblem right there. But I think these are the screws that hold this in. So I think if you take out these screws, uh, maybe you can re easily replace this mo module. Now, again, this is not a breakaway module. The mirror cannot be just like taken off easily, leaving the camera module, which is a little unfortunate, um, but that is what it is. Okay, well, uh, let me know if you noticed any other differences or anything else you noticed in this video. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a great day.